In this lesson, I'm going to show you a huge shortcut using the open source package Angular Auto Validate. What Angular Auto Validate does is it gets rid of all of that boilerplate repetitive code and it just adds in all of the elements that you need to just give you these nice little error messages and it also has default uh, error message strings as well. It works with Twitter Bootstrap or Foundation. Since we're using Twitter Bootstrap then that's how I'm going to show you how to use it and let's start off. First thing we're going to do is we're actually going to install it. I'm going to install it via Bower. If you don't know how to use Bower, feel free to go to the site go to the GitHub and then just uh, download it as is. Um, I'm gonna just gonna download it using Bower though. So this is the Bower name. Okay, so we've got it installed. I'm now gonna go into my file and I'm just gonna go to my script section at the bottom, I'm gonna include it. It has to be included, so when you start including open source or extra packages which extend Angular, it needs to be included after Angular. So let me just include it. Auto validate this. Let me do the min version. Okay, so step two in including an open source package into your Angular application is we go into our main.js file and we need to go back to the top of the page and if you remember from a while back this is where I said that we add dependencies so for JCS for Angular Auto Validate they have named all of their code and their logic for that package under the namespace JCS Auto Validate so that's all we have to do to include that open source package into our Angular application is to A, include the JavaScript file in your list of JavaScript files and then go into your app.js and add that app module as a dependency of your module. Let's just double check this is working. Refresh, no errors. So that's looking really good so far. And let's just also add the required fields to each of the other input fields. We only added it to email to begin with, so let's add it to the rest. So now it's good. So basically we've just removed all of the code, literally all of the code that we added in the previous lesson. We've kind of added no extra uh, directives or anything. All we've done is we've just made them all required. So let's go into the form, let's refresh, and let's hit register. There you go. So it's done all of the coloring of the error messages at the bottom. So even if we start typing in with the email, it has a nice uh, error message for an invalid email, and uh, even for age. So age needs age is a number field. So if we type not a number, it gives us that. So that's just brilliant. But also take a look on the right hand side and what's happened is the uh, we don't even see an, a message for invalid form submission. So what, let's just take a look at the code again so you're reminded. So what we had was on submit the form dot valid and on submit what in the previous one was called and if valid was false it would print invalid form. Now what's happening here is JCS also auto validate actually hooks into this and if the form isn't valid doesn't even call this function at all so that just saves us again a whole bunch of writing boilerplate code so i'm going to delete that in there because we know it's not going to get called if it's not invalid i want to delete that and i'm just going to get back to where we were to begin with and bring that down comment that back in we're looking good and actually we don't even need the form as well because we're not using it anywhere at all so we're just going to remove that also so again even less code that we need to write and actually I'm just going to add form model back in there so we can see what's going on and let's go back here refresh the page and then boom so we're all here again but now that we're here I'm kind of not happy with some of the error messages that I'm getting and I also want to add some extra validation for the username field 
And for the age field, I kind of want to make sure that people are over 18 to use my site because my site's a naughty site. And I also want to make sure they're under 64 because I don't want to cause a heart attack. So we're going to add some extra validation here as well. Let's go into the code again. Let's go into the username field. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that they can't add spaces or anything which isn't username like. Now what we can do is we can use a pattern and you can use patterns in HTML5 form validation as well to see the kind of patterns that you want to use. You can go to html5patterns.com and for each of the different types of input fields it gives you a nice pattern to use. So this is a regular expression. If you're not if you don't know how to use regular expressions or you're not comfortable with them, just head on over here and try and find something which kind of works with what you're looking for. So I kind of like the Twitter username style pattern which is any capital letter, any small case letter, any number and any underscore. Um, so I'm going to use that and we're going to add that to the username field and we're going to add it via another Angular directive which I'm going to introduce you to which is ng pattern. Okay. Now for ng pattern you start off with a forward slash and then the pattern and then you end with a forward slash as well. So this is going to make the field invalid if the user tries to enter anything which doesn't match this pattern. And also because it's a username, I just want to make sure that they enter, you know, just a few, you know, I want to have a minimum length on on, on how much they on the length of their username. So I'm going to say they at least have to enter seven characters. So yeah, seven characters is a minimum username. And at the same time, seeing that we're here, I'm just going to add minimum max. Now this isn't an angular direct, this is built into number fields, but it's a attribute called min. I'm going to say the min for the age is going to be 18. I'm going to say the max for the age is going to be 64. And just so we just finish it off while we're here, I'm going to go to the password field. And, you know, we want to make sure our users add a pretty lengthy password. So I'm going to add ng min length of at least 10 on the password field there. So let's go back into the form and try this out. Okay, so here we go. For age, we put one. Ah, another error message. Please enter a minimum age of 18. I had 99 and please enter a maximum number of 64. Uh, so let's put in 38. Perfect. Um, for the password, one, two, ah, at least 10 characters. Excellent. And remember, we didn't actually add any of these error messages. JCS auto validate just does a lot of really good guesses as to kind of the kind of error message it makes most sense to show for the different validators. So it saves you a ton, ton of time. There we go there. And for the username field, let's say we own, we need at least seven characters. I'm going to make them illegal characters. And there you go. So it gives you an error message here. So please enter the end. It adheres to this pattern. Okay. But I don't think an end user is really going to understand what the hell this means. I mean, it's just it's gobbledygook to them, right? So how do we give a much better and a much more user-friendly error message to this for the username? And also, I'm kind of not happy with this. Please enter a minimum number of 18. I kind of want to just say you need to be at least 18 years old or something a bit more user-friendly. So I'm going to show you now is how to add uh, custom error messages to your form with the Angular auto-validate package. So how we're going to do this is we're going to head on over to the app.j or the main.js here. And what we need to do is we need to add what's called an app.run run run hook. Now we're going to add some code in here. An app.run is run kind of just before the directives and the and the controllers are instantiated and the directives kind of are compiled and added to the page. So it's a way of hooking in, you know, functionality into Angular before it really kicks off and does its main stuff. So we just want to hook it into there and before it runs, we want to add some default error messages into the platform. So I'm not going to go through and type a load of code. I'm just going to copy and paste. I don't think you want to see me typing code, who cares? I'm just going to explain what's going on here. So app.run, it's going to get pumped into it, the default error message resolver, which is kind of a built-in feature. And then in here, it's going to get the error messages and when it gets returned, it's then we're then going to hook into the error messages a bunch of new messages. So for two, I'm going to add an error message called too young. I'm just going to say you must be at least uh, 
years old to use this site. So this syntax here, what will be passed in here is the value of the, the kind of the validation check value. So if it's ng, if it's min 18, it's gonna 18 is gonna get passed here. So for too old, you must be max years old to use a site. And I'm gonna add from for bad username. So username is gonna contain numbers and letters, and I'm gonna say underscore here as well. So we just add this in and boom, how do we actually make those form fields use these error messages in particular? So let's head back into our HTML. And we're gonna add some directives that were introduced by the Angular Auto Validate package. Now this directive is called, I'm just, I'm just gonna type out and show you it. Where are we? What makes most sense? Here we go, right? It's gonna do for the age first. So ng min, because we're applying this to the minimum error, I'm gonna do type, I wanna type too young. Okay, so what I'm saying here is that for if the minimum number validator kicks in, don't show the default error message, show the error message that you can find by looking for the key too young in the default error messages. So just to go back into here, show you. So it's gonna basically look for this one instead. So that's that's for the min and for the max, it's just max. So you can imagine it's actually just, whatever the validator that you want, you just ng at your validator uh, type and then whatever you want as the key to the string, key to the, uh, what do you call it, the default error message resolver. So I'm gonna add those two and for the username, I'm going to add, so if you remember pattern, so ng at pattern uh, type to young and actually, what did I call that? I call that bad username. Here we go. Bad username. So this looks good to me. I'm going to head back into the form. Hit refresh. So A, please enter these seven characters. There we go. Usernames can only contain numbers and letters and underscore. And for age, I'm going to have one. Ah, you must be at least 18 years old. I'm going to have 99, 64 years old, and 38, just right. So let me fill out the rest of this form. I'm gonna have Asim, Asim, perfect. Asim at Asim.com, and my name is Asim. So let's submit this. We're submitting, and if you remember, we had the smiley face. There we go, the smiley face, we're all good. So there you go, a incredibly fast shortcut, especially compared to part two. We saved ourselves a ton of coding, and we had the time, so we just thought, what the hell, we added in some much more detailed validation on the front end. So, you know, that's much better. And uh, we, you know, we added in a much better user experience by giving them better error messages. So huge, hugely brilliant, really fantastic third party package. We use this package at Bubblegum almost constantly now, and it just saves us a ton of time. And I think it's gonna save you guys a ton of time.